Take the lug nuts off. Take your cap off first. There'll be a cap on the wheel and then lug nuts. Take those off. Get your tire. Get a bottle. Put some water in it and just a little bit of Dawn or some kind of dish soap. Some kind of soap. Go around the whole tire. Make sure there's air in it. If there's not air in the tire, air it up to 30 or 40 pounds. Here's, here's a hole I fixed before. Um, so yeah, go around the whole tire and find where it's doing that. See that right there? Those big bubbles? That is air coming out of your tire. So that screw got picked up and it's now leaking there. So how you fix it is you remove it. Remove the, the object if you can. Sometimes you can't remove it and then you have to push it into your tire and that's fine, just push it in. I'm gonna try and remove this first. Let's see. There we go. Get a bite on it now. It's probably bent in there too, so it's gonna come out weird. Kind of trying to just twist it. Right. You back up a little bit, Eden. Daddy. Daddy. Yeah, that's where the leak is. Okay, I'm twisting it. Let's see. It's threaded, so a little lefty loosey works, sort of. Back up, Ezra. That's a pretty big screw. So, what we're going to need are patches, tire patches. You can get them at Walmart, gas stations. Um, if it's on the sidewall, you can still try a tire patch. People say it's dangerous, whatever, might not hold. It's up to you if you want to do it or not. I'm not responsible. If you get in an accident because of your tire, you need to be a good driver. All right, so now you definitely know. Tons of air coming out of there. There's the culprit. And then what you need is, okay. Um, depending on the size hole, they have different, different size patches. Um, Let's see what we got here. Okay, so this one, where is it right there? That's not actually too big. So I've got two different sizes. I'm gonna use a smaller one. What you do is you kind of clean it out first. When you get the patch kit, it'll come with this tool or this tool or another tool that's straight, and then some of these. I just like to make a little, sometimes making the hole bigger, but you kind of need to to get the plug in there. This almost always works and seals it up if it's not too big of a hole. And if you can get, get it in there good enough, these hardly ever leak. Take it to a repair shop is what a lot of them do. Some of them will take the tire off the rim and patch it from the back. But a lot of places, honestly, just will just do this. I wonder if there's... No, that was the whole screw. Might just put the plug in how it is. Back up, Ezra. Pull out some of that rubber. All right. Well, no, you need to bore it out because you don't want to have this problem when you're putting the plug in. So make sure and uh, get this thing so it'll go all the way in.
There's different things you can use. You don't have to use this tool to do this. You gotta use a tool like this to put the plug in, but to open up this hole, you can use a, I don't know, pick or kind of do some of that. Clean it out, open it up a little bit. Rough it up. There we go. All right. Then take your little patch. Just put it through the hole. Thread it. Ouch, this thing's hot. Friction. Thread it through there. Bada bing, just right in the middle. And this is it. Push this in here. What you're doing is you're pushing the whole rubber plug in there. And at the end of this, there's a little opening. When you pull it out, it releases it. So I'm going to push this in. Try not to go too far. All right, just, just went in. I'm going to go right to there. So there it is. And then I'm going to pull this out real quick. Um, all right, here we go. Yep, just one quick motion. Pull it out. It'll pop through here. Now it's it's pretty much sealed. Um, what I do to be a little more thorough, you don't have to do this, and I just started doing this. I don't know if it's really helped, but this is a little rubber cement. Comes with tire tire repair kits. You can do a little bit of this around the around the edges. I haven't had too much. Hey, how's it going? How you doing? Good. Um, I haven't had too much problem with this. Wheel time. Wheels. What does that do? Uh, that helps seal it. Alright. Probably should have done that last, but oh well. And then, you don't have to, just driving on it will uh, really get rid of it, but I usually trim it down. Cut it with a razor blade or something similar. You don't want to pull it out, just cut it. Alright, got that goop. Yeah, let's do the rubber cement after. I don't know what I was thinking. There we go. That's really nasty. There. Alright. It's all sealed. Best way to check. Fill it up there. Helps have an air compressor for all this. You can use. I don't know, bike pump, I guess, if you really want to take your time. Alright, so I'm going to put, sometimes it's, if it's hard to find your leak, you want to put more air in it. So if you take your tire off and there's, it looks like it's almost flat, sometimes it's hard because there's not enough air coming out. So then you want to put air in it, and then when you spray it, bubbles will come out easier. Thank you. Mine had plenty of air coming out. I didn't need to spray it or put air in it. Uh, I'm going to turn this thing on. Alright, as you see, I put I put about 40 pounds in there. That's about what I run on my tires. You can put 35 or 30, whatever you want to run. First thing is, if you can hear it leaking, you know you've got a bad leak. I can't hear anything. I'm going to actually let it dry a little bit more, but you can just go through, spray. So here's another one I did. So you can see, I left a nub like that, and then once you drive on it and stuff, it just presses into the tire so it's no big deal. Yep, no bubbles. Pretty sure that was the only leak. Alright, let's see. Yep, look, no bubbles. Like before it was big bubbles coming out. Yeah, so that's good. Throw it back on the car, honestly, and you're good to go. Um, that could last through all the wear of this tire, honestly. You go all the way down to being a bald tire and that won't that won't un come unplugged or lose air or anything. This has got air in it. Off them cap back on. It's good. Yep, not leaking anymore. So lug nuts, you want to make sure these isn't old, isn't 89 or 87 bubble. 
they're different. See on this side, it's kind of tapered. You wanna make sure that's the inward side that centers the wheel and helps tighten it. If you just do this side, it will, uh, it doesn't really get in between the nut and the wheel. Most modern ones, it's really easy to tell which one's on the inside and outside. But on some old cars, I've, I've put them on backwards and I've had other people put them on backwards and just wanna make sure that like the tapered part goes to the inside. <clears throat> Oop. This uh, this drill only goes to like, I don't know, it doesn't tighten that much. But after I do this, drop the car. Clear. Boom. This is on a torque wrench. Always check your torque, guys. Nothing to play around with. Don't, don't, just wing it. And if you do, just go extra tight, which isn't good for anything, so. Um, it's not good for your, could warp your rotors if you go too tight, strip your threads, make it so you can't get them off, break, break your studs. I mean, that's really tight, but. I, I usually go a little bit tighter than factory, though. I'll do 85. I think factory on this one's like 70 foot pounds, maybe 75. Yeah. Okay. Impact them all down. Boom. Boom. Double check all of them. Yep, we're about 85 on all of them. Cat back on. Good to go. Thanks for watching, guys. Like and subscribe. You. Oh, remember also, for the torque wrench, once you're finished using it, always take it back out. This is something I forget, but put it back down to zero. Don't want to leave them torqued when they're resting.